Morning, everyone. Um, I am just going to wait a couple of seconds uh, just while people log on uh, before I introduce today's uh, webinar. Thanks for joining. Okay. It's looking like um, people are starting to log in now. So hi everyone. Um, so uh, my name is Rachel Sharp. Um, I'm the social media executive um, at Forever Forever's UK head office. Um, and I've been working in social media for sort of the past four or five years now. So um, hopefully I've got a few tips and tricks up my sleeve for today's webinar, which is uh, of course, figuring out Facebook for your business. Um, some of you may have joined our other webinar, which was on Tuesday, and that was all about um, uh, using Twitter and Instagram um, for your business. So uh, some of the slides in here might be the same, but most of it is obviously different content because it's talking about um, mainly Facebook. So this is going to be kind of a beginner's guide to Facebook, um, but hopefully it'll be beneficial as well if you already have um, Facebook pages set up or if you've already been using it for your business in the past, hopefully there, shall, there will be some new uh, tips and tricks in here for you. Um, if um, I touch on anything that I then don't expand on, um, feel free to let the events team know if you want to see more about that because I'm sure we can arrange for um, another webinar in the future that goes more into detail about certain things. Obviously due to time today I just can't go through everything. Um, and also if you have any specific questions feel free to drop them in the Q&A uh, and we'll try to answer it as I go along um, so that we can answer all of your questions. So um, yeah let's get started. So um, why use social media, first of all? Um, so social media uh, is a great alternative way uh, to communicate with your customers. Um, it's a cost effective form of advertising. Um, so, you know, if you're printing lots of uh, brochures and flyers that can get quite expensive for traveling to a lot of places that can go quite expensive. Um, so uh, what you'll find uh, with social media is that it's completely free to set up an account. Um, so it's a very cost, effect uh, cost effective method of uh, reaching a lot of people. Um, obviously you can drive uh, traffic to your shop. Um, so you can add links into all of your social media posts. So that can be really beneficial. Um, you can showcase your lifestyle, uh, which is, of course, showcasing that you're a product of the product and things like that. Um, you can drive brand awareness and build brand identity. Uh, you can deliver a high level of customer service. So a lot of people are trying to um, get in touch with brands via social media for uh, their customer service needs. So you can actually get back to people very, very quickly. Uh, using social media. Uh, you can increase the trust between you and your customers because you're building a community and obviously you can strengthen relationships as well again because you're kind of building um, a community uh, and you can literally speak to people real time on social media. Uh, so if we quickly take a look at what the modern consumer uh, kind of expects from their time online. So they, they use multiple devices for different stages of the purchase cycle. Uh, they're in control. So if they, you know, they follow what they want to follow and they unfollow what they no longer want to follow. So they're completely in control of what they're sort of consuming. Uh, they're time starved and impatient. Uh, so, you know, they want short, snappy, uh, quick bits of content. Um, they look for social proof. And by that, I mean, they, um, they kind of look for positive reviews from other people to kind of uh, showcase you know, that the, the product that they think they're buying is actually worth it uh, in other people's eyes. Um, and also, I mean, for me personally, uh, if I see a brand, the first thing I do is look them up on social media because I want to see that they've got a good social media presence before I invest in them. Uh, that is just, <laughs> that is the modern consumer. Um, so they want extreme simplicity. Uh, they're all individuals, um, so you can't just mass target people. You need to sort of understand your audience and target to them individually. Um, they expect round the clock support and they expect it really quickly. Um, and if you listen, they will give you your strategy. Um, so they, you know, you'll see what's performing well, you'll see what's not performing well when you measure your performance, which will come to in a little while. 
why use Facebook? Uh, so Facebook is the most widely used social media platform. Uh, there's a very good chance that most people you know will already be on Facebook. Um, and obviously it has a bit of a friendship culture as well. So um, it's ideal for creating or rekindling relationships with others, um, whether that's old school friends or people that you meet at the school gates while you drop the kids off and stuff like that. Um, it's a great place to share photos and updates, um, whether that's about your life or whether it's general news regarding you and your business. Um, it's a really great place, again, to increase your website or shop uh, traffic uh, because you can put links in to all of your Facebook posts. Um, you can create Facebook pages and Facebook groups, which I'll talk about more in a second. Um, so they have slightly different approaches. Facebook, group, uh, Facebook pages are a really great shop front. Um, so if you wanted to showcase a particular um, product or how you use products, then you'd use a, a Facebook page um, and they can be a great way to reach new customers. Um, and when it comes to Facebook groups, you can have um, lots of different groups. You can have as many as you like. Um, all for different audiences. Um, so they can be closed, which means that they are sort of closer, more engaged communities. Um, you have a good chance of being able to make it uh, more personal. Um, so you, again, you can talk about sort of your own life um, as well as the products and sort of build up a community around um, things that people are interested in. Um, it's a great place to build relationships um, or build up warm leads. Um, and you may find that it might be a good place to find new recruits as well, people who are already interested in, say, the products, if they're already your customers, um, and then you can sort of build up communities around um, recruitment as well. Um, and as I said, you can have as many Facebook groups as you want. So you could even have another, like a Facebook group for your customers, um, and then a Facebook group, say, for your downline. Um, and a lot of you may already be part of a Facebook group um, that your upline has arranged. So you may um, be able to uh, take inspiration from those people. Um, so this is just a quick overview when it comes to uh, personal profiles versus pages and groups. Um, when it comes to personal profiles, this is something that if you, if you join Facebook, then you'll have a, a personal profile. And this is, if you already have a Facebook profile, this is probably what you'll have. Um, so what a Facebook profile is, is it um, promotes an individual. Um, it's your own personal page. A lot of people obviously use it to um, you know, tag themselves into a location or share photos from, you know, their wedding or whatever it happens to be. You're unable to target anyone um, on a Facebook profile. Uh, so it's pretty much just uh, your friendship groups. And it's used more to connect with family and friends. Um, and also you don't really have any analytics tools on Facebook profiles either. So um, they can be the drawbacks of having just a Facebook profile. And that's why we would then recommend um, looking at pages or groups. Um, so a Facebook page kind of promotes the brand um, and promotes your business as a whole. Um, it's open for all to follow and view. Uh, you can invite people to like the page, but anyone can find it. Anyone can uh, like it and join it and, and see what it's about. It's a little bit more professional. Um, you have access to paid advertising features if you want that as a tool that you can use. Um, and you also have access to analytics. And analytics, again, I'll show you a little bit about later, but they're really good for figuring out what it is your audience is engaging with uh, and therefore what you should do more of. Um, when it comes to groups, uh, they're a great hub for discussion and interaction. Uh, and they're more like community pages where you can discuss a certain topic. Um, so again, I mentioned you can obviously create um, Facebook groups for different, um, different groups of people, uh, whether you have one for just your customers and then one for your downline, or you could even split your customers up. It depends on how many groups you want to maintain, but you could even have different groups for, say, if you're a mum and you have lots of mum friends, you can have a group for those people and post content that's relevant to them. Um, or you can have a group which is, um, you know, centered around sports. If you're a runner, say, and you wanted to share things about sports, you can have people who are interested in sports. Um, so again, they're community pages to discuss topics that those individuals are actually interested in. You kind of have multiple levels of privacy with a group, um, which is really useful. So it's kind of a members only thing. Um, you can have it so that only people who you invite um, can actually join the group um, or you can have it so that it can be fully searchable, but then they still have to join to be able to see the content um, things like that. So you can sort of um, decide on the privacy 
depending on the kind of group that you want to run. And again, you've got a certain um, number of analytic tools um, with that as well. So I'm not going to go into great detail about setting up pages and groups because that could take quite a while. Um, probably the best place to go is to this address here. So that's www.facebook.com forward slash help. And then you can literally just type in your query here, how to set up a Facebook group. And that will tell you um, kind of the step by steps of exactly how you need to do it. Um, and that, 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 that'll be the easiest thing to sort of follow that. Um, but a few tips, uh, probably just make sure that you have a profile picture and a cover photo. Um, so those are the things that are going to be, uh, again, almost your shop front that's representing um, your brand so that people know it and can click it. And when it appears on their, um, their Facebook, they can see um, that it's your group. Um, and it's also worth inviting people to like your page or inviting people to join your group um, because you can't just set it up and expect people to find it and join it themselves. You do need to prompt people and just make sure that they're aware that it exists. So I'll just uh, go into a little bit more details about Facebook pages. So as I mentioned before, pages can work as really great shop fronts. Um, so you, again, you can link to your website or you can link to specific products if you're talking about a specific product. Um, and that is um, a really great way to drive traffic to your website. Um, it's a great place as well to showcase yourself or your customers using the products um, and a really great place as well to showcase um, tips and tricks for how to use a product um, so that it's, um, you know, people have a little bit of added value. Um, you could also link to a blog posts, which may be of interest to your customers. Um, so uh, you could either write your own or you could share ours. Um, ours are always updated on a Friday. So at foreverknowledge.info uh, forward slash blog, you can find all of our blogs on there. Um, or again, you could just uh, reference articles from around the internet, which may be of interest um, to your audience. And it's a great place to sort of um, put all of those uh, features. Um, so you can use Facebook advertising uh, when you have a page. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into great depth on uh, Facebook advertising in this um, particular presentation um, because it would take quite a long time. It's quite uh, big to explain. If it is something that, that people are interested in, obviously feel free to let the events team know and it could be something that we look into doing in the future. Um, and then the other thing is uh, that content doesn't always have to be about the products. Um, I think that's really important. The idea behind your Facebook page um, and groups um, is to think about how you can add value to your customer's time online. Um, so a, a good example of this is, is just being aware of what your audience is actually interested in and what's going to make you look the most knowledgeable about your topic. So if, for instance, you're sort of... Um, building up your company based on C9 sales um, and you were to um, talk about and share articles that were about healthy eating and exercise and fitness um, and share those on your Facebook page, that then makes you look really knowledgeable about um, kind of the fitness and wellness um, side of things. Um, so that when you eventually share, um, say, the C9, people will then know that you are a good source of knowledge um, and they can sort of ask you any questions um, around that product and around the topic, um, which can obviously lead to um, future sales. Um, so when it comes to Facebook groups, uh, groups are a really great way to keep your customers engaged um, and also keep your downline engaged if you would have um, a group that was focused on your downline. Um, you can set up different groups for different audiences, like I say. Um, remember that it's a community, so it's not just about posting, it's about having a conversation and speaking to people. Um, and I think that's really important to remember um, is to make sure that you don't just post um, you actually, if you, if you make a post, be sure to have a conversation with people. Um, it's again, not always about the products. You can make it a little bit more personal, um, because it is a group. Those people are interested in the community and they're interested in you as a person. So obviously you can talk about your day-to-day -day life. Um, you could talk about your family, you could talk about how your family uses the products, but it doesn't always have to be about the products. You can make it as personal as you want, as you're comfortable with. Um, 
you should always try to encourage people to comment wherever possible as um, this will lead to more engagement which means Facebook pushes the content out to more people um, and it's really really important to always reply to comments um, and I think that's um, a key thing really if you're asking people to write a comment and then you just ignore all of the comments they're going to quickly stop leaving comments on any of your posts um, so I would definitely suggest uh, making sure you reply to all of the comments um, and just making sure you're having those conversations. Um, so here are a few, um, again, ideas for content. Uh, so this was just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, happy World Emoji Day. Uh, can you guess the forever product based on the emojis that you can see here? Um, and so that's kind of just posted up into the group um, and people will be tempted to, if you know, if they spot one that they think they can name, like say, oh, number two, that's uh, Forever Be Honey, um, then they'll comment that and you can sort of get quite a lot of engagement through that. Um, same again with um, skincare bingo here. Um, so tick off all the products that you'll be indulging in this weekend and comment below with bingo if you get a line or even a full house. Um, so again, that can encourage people to just sort of take a look um, and comment, um, you know, if they're going to be using all of these products or even if they look at this and they see a product that they don't recognize, then they might comment and say, oh, what's this one? I've never seen that one before. And then you can start a conversation that way. Um, these two templates actually come from FLP Social, which is one of the social media platforms that you can subscribe to. Um, and so these aren't related to products at all, um, but they're quite good ideas. Again, it's just a way to get people to sort of start having conversations with you. Um, so this one says, what's the weirdest thing you have in your handbag? Uh, and this one is, uh, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? And that would just encourage people um, to kind of have a conversation with you and start leaving comments on your posts. Um, so anything like this is a really great example of the kind of content that you can post to a Facebook group. Um, so user generated content um, in a nutshell is basically content that hasn't been created by the brand. Um, so it, essentially it just looks a little bit more authentic. 56% um, of people are more likely to buy after seeing positive user generated content. Um, there's seven times higher engagement than on brand content. Uh, there's seven times more trust from user generated content than from uh, an ad or something that looks like branded content. Um, and people also look at user generated images for inspiration every day. So whether that's inspiration on how to use the products um, and things like that. Um, so what I would take from this um, is wherever possible, take your own pictures. Um, so we have a huge um, gallery of images that you can use um, and posts and I'll, and I'll sort of show you in a minute um, where you can find those. Um, but it's ideal if you can take your own pictures uh, wherever possible because they do look more authentic um, and they do look more engaging. Um, so people will be more likely to actually, they think that you're using the products, they can see that you're using the products. Uh, so they're more likely to trust that content. Um, but user generated content can also work in the sense of if you have a customer who has purchased a product from you and then they're posting that on their social media channels, um, ask if you can use their content on your channel because that's that kind of social proof that we talked about earlier um, in the sense of um, people want to see other customers enjoying the products as well. Um, so again, that's another uh, case of user generated content. If they take a great picture, ask if you can use it on your channel. Chances are they'll say yes. Um, obviously be sure to credit them. Um, but then again, you've got a lot of um, content there. And if you're wondering how on earth to take a very good picture, that's the next slide. Um, so taking a great photo uh, probably seems a little bit intimidating at first, um, but you don't have to have a fancy DSLR camera or anything like that, you can literally just use your mobile phone. Um, and that's, um, you know, the great thing about phones these days, obviously, is that they have so many megapixels and the image quality looks great every single time anyway. Um, so this is kind of how you take a good photo. Um, be sure to use natural lighting wherever possible. Um, so that can either be going outside, especially if it's a nice day. If it's not so nice, maybe just um, go near a window. Um, and that way um, you're getting really nice lighting. The thing you want to avoid is weird shadows um, or sort of that 
yellowy looking light that makes everything look a little bit stale. Um, so I would definitely avoid taking, um, you know, a picture of one of the skincare products into a bathroom that doesn't have any natural light, turning the light on and then holding your phone over the top of it. It's just going to create shadows wherever possible. Try and take it near a window or take it outside. Um, try to clear the background so don't have anything grubby in the background. Uh, make sure that you can't see uh, the camera or phone in a reflection, whether that's you know in a mirror or kitchen black backsplash or whatever it happens to be. Make sure that you can't see the reflection of the phone um, and just try to keep the space as clear as possible because that's going to take the best picture. Try to you'll use the rule of thirds. Um, that's not a hard and fast rule, but if you're not really sure how to frame a picture, uh, you can kind of follow this um, to make sure that your picture's uh, framed nicely. So um, the rule of thirds is this section here um, explained quite nicely. So simply put, the rule of thirds breaks the image up into nine quadrants of equal size. So when taking a photo, rather than placing the subject in the dead center of the frame, try placing it along one of the grid lines or even better, if you can place it at one of the four intersections, um, that's gonna give you the most uh, nicely composed image that you can get. Um, so shifting the subject left or right, or above or below the dead middle, um, just creates a more interesting layout. Um, and what you can actually do is you can adjust your phone camera settings to show that grid if you find it helpful to have it there. Um, obviously it won't appear in the final product, but it can help you to line um, the picture up as you want it in the moment. Um, this one sounds really, really simple, um, but you'd be surprised the amount of people who forget it. Um, and that is to wipe the phone lens. Um, so if you think about how many times you use your phone, you put it in your pocket, you pick it up out of your pocket, you're touching your camera constantly. Um, and it gets far dirtier than you even can imagine. <laughs> um, so it's a really good idea to use a cloth uh, just to wipe down the camera. And I can't, I cannot tell you how much of a difference that will make. Um, you'll kind of get rid of that weird sort of blurriness, um, especially like if you're in a really light, um, you know, if you're outside and you're trying to take a picture and you think that everyone looks like they've got a sort of faint blurry aura around them, that's because your lens needs cleaning. So just make sure you give it a quick clean and that will instantly increase the quality of all of your photos. Um, make sure obviously that your subject is in focus. Uh, so again, if you're using just a phone, you can literally just tap the screen on the product that you uh, want to bring into focus and your phone will just automatically do that for you. Um, and then my other bit of advice would be just to take lots of photos. So you can obviously just review them and pick your favorite one at a later date. So you take lots of photos from lots of different angles and then pick the best one. Um, and that might sound a little bit time consuming, but it will definitely be worth it rather than just taking one picture, walking away and then realizing actually, um, you know, your picture's blurry or it just, you know, doesn't look very nice. So, um, yeah, putting a little bit of time into that is really, really beneficial. So then videos, um, they're another great thing to use on Facebook um, or on social media in general. Um, so studies show that 54% of consumers want to see more video content from a brand or a business that they support. Um, and it's also a really great tool for learning because it's easy to digest. Um, it, we're all really busy. No one wants to read really long product descriptions. Um, so the easiest thing is if people can literally see you explaining something that is far easier for them to digest than having to sit through and read a product description or whatever it happens to be. Um, so wherever possible, I would recommend that you try to do videos. And again, this is just how to sort of record a great video. Um, so similar to before, use natural lighting wherever possible, um, either try and film outside or film near a window. Um, bear in mind um, what's called the golden hour. Uh, so if you're filming outside, definitely try not to film in direct uh, midday sunlight because you're going to end up getting shadows across your face, you'll end up squinting. Um, it won't necessarily look that good. And then the picture is usually too bright as well, which then just makes it just painful to watch. Um, anyway, if you're just staring at a phone trying to watch a video like that, then it won't be enjoyable. Um, so try to film an hour or two before the sun sets. And that's what's called golden hour um, because um, the video footage just sort of looks effortlessly quite nice. Um, or you can wait for an overcast day. They're very, 
<laughs> they're very frequent in the United Kingdom, so um, shouldn't be too difficult. And that will just help you to um, sort of avoid uh, harsh lighting. Um, always be sure to check your audio. Um, so phones are really good these days at capturing like high definition footage, it's not a problem, but they're still not brilliant at picking up um, sound. Um, so it's worth investing in a microphone if you can. Um, microphones, you can pick them up pretty cheaply, sort of from £10, a little lapel mic that just sits um, sort of on your um, t-shirt. Um, and that way you can ensure the sound quality is really good. Um, if you can't afford to buy one just yet, then um, just try to avoid any background noise. So uh, wherever possible, try to avoid filming in a room where there's loads of noisy children or a whirring fridge or air conditioner in the background um, and try to avoid busy spaces or near busy roads. Um, and it's also worth investing in a tripod as well. Again, it doesn't have to be a really expensive tripod you can get them quite cheaply um, and it could even just be one of the small ones um, so it doesn't have to be a full uh, tripod that stands up from the floor but you can get one of the small ones and it fits on uh, on top of your desk and then you'll just have a, a less shaky video it's much nicer to watch that way uh, Facebook lives are also another really great tool um, Facebook lives are actually about three times more uh, engaging than a standard video so video is more engaging than uh, photos and text, but a Facebook Live is three times more engaging than a video. Um, and you can, again, easily do that from your phone. It doesn't require any editing um, and it creates an emotional connection as well because it's happening live in the moment, which means that um, obviously people can have that conversation with you. Uh, so it's worth planning um, a live um, at a suitable time for you and your audience uh, and you're most likely to know when that is. Um, you should title your live video properly. So if you know that you're going to be talking about a specific product, make sure that you put that in the title so that people know what to expect. Obviously feel free to practice. Uh, it can be quite nerve wracking going live at first. Uh, so it's a good idea to just have a practice about what you're going to say. Make sure your connection is good. Um, that's really, really important. No one wants to watch a video if it's dipping in and out or if uh, it's sort of laggy or anything like that. Um, you can obviously experiment with different styles. Um, so you can, that's the great thing as well. You can sort of do a live one week and it can, you know, be about one thing and you can do a live another week and it can be something else entirely and you can see what performs best and experiment with different styles. Um, and then don't forget to add a call to action. So um, what I mean by that is you can start the video um, by telling live watchers to say hi uh, or let them know, um, what they've been up to recently so that you can sort of start a conversation and that kind of uh, stops you feeling a little bit awkward as well because you're having a two-way conversation with people then. Uh, but then it's also uh, worth encouraging watchers who are coming back to the video, people who can't watch it live but they're going to come watch uh, later on, if they type a comment like hashtag replay, um, that way you can see that they've watched it and they've um, got the message um, and that again, it's increasing engagement all the time, which Facebook rewards. It's also a really good idea as well. Obviously, if you're talking about a specific product um, to direct people to your website so that they, um, you know, have a call to action to buy it or even just to direct message you if they want a little bit more information about that product as well. Um, so. Facebook live ideas, uh, obviously coming up with ideas can sometimes be a bit tricky. Um, Facebook Lives can be quite simple and they don't have to be high production value. Um, so you could, you could talk about yourself, uh, you could talk about what you've been up to, what your family's been up to. Um, you could maybe do a behind the scenes, so if you wanted to showcase your workout, um, if you wanted to showcase an event that you were at, when we can all go to events again. <laughs> um, you could talk about your day-to-day uh, -day life. Um, you could do a product how-to, so, um, you know, showcasing your skincare routine um, or how to make a smoothie with Forever Light Ultra, something like that. Um, can be quite a good idea to do a series, so something like Monday Motivation, Wednesday Wisdom, so people know then to expect you to go live every Wednesday at 10am, for example, uh, and they know what they're going to get. They're going to get some inspiration or some wisdom or whatever it happens to be. 
Um, so doing a series is quite good. Um, and you can also invite customers or team members, family members, influencers to do Q and A's as well. Um, again, that creates a little bit of engagement and can be a little bit easier if you're doing a Facebook Live with somebody uh, that you already know and already trust, can just make it a little bit easier to sort of ease yourself into those videos as well. Um, so using forever content, um, it's really, really important never to use copyrighted content. Uh, so don't do a Google search and try and find a picture on there to represent what you're talking about. Um, if you use something without permission or which isn't free to use, um, you can leave yourself at risk of getting fined or even getting your social, uh, social media account deleted. Um, so to protect yourself, you should only really be taking your own pictures. Um, you could also use customer pictures if they've given you permission to use those. Um, you can make your own graphics or you can use the forever content that we supply. So we create things like this uh, and these are all available on forever knowledge. You can use absolutely anything and it's uh, exactly the same with our social media channels. You can use anything that we feature on our social media channels uh, on your own channel. That's absolutely fine. Um, so yes, just making sure that you use the right content is really, really important. Uh, if you're thinking that this sounds like quite a lot of work, um, it can be. Uh, and that's why I think it's really important to create a content plan. Uh, what this does is it really simplifies everything. Uh, and it means that um, you're not spending hours and hours and hours purely dedicated to social media. Um, this makes it a little bit easier. Um, so a content plan ensures every piece of content is relevant to your audience because you planned it in advance. You know who your audience is, you know what they enjoy. Um, and you can literally plan what they want. Um, and it ensures as well that there's a consistent flow of content across all of your channels. Um, so this can be another thing. It's quite easy um, to think, oh, I've got a spare afternoon, so I'll just spam my Facebook pages and I'll just keep posting content. Um, so you don't want to do that. If you have a spare afternoon, that's when you can plan all of your content and then start scheduling it in. Um, so again, make scheduling content a lot easier. If you've got it all written down, um, you know, which days you're going to post it, what times you're going to post it, then you can literally go into Facebook. There's a little section um, and it lets you uh, schedule in advance. Um, so that makes things so much easier. Um, moves, helps to move your audience through the sales funnel. So if you've never seen that before, this is a sales funnel. Um, right at the top, you kind of have awareness. So they may never have heard of your brand before um, and you sort of you're capturing their attention then you kind of capture their interest and they're like hmm, okay that looks that looks good uh, and then around this point they're starting to make decisions about the products that you're posting about and then they're going to take action um, so a content plan helps to move them through this because you can um, almost start a campaign from scratch uh, you know here's a product you don't know anything about it yet i'm going to drive some awareness around it um, and then you know, you move people through uh, each stage of the sales funnel. Um, and then it's also really, really important. Uh, so obviously I've talked here about uh, the importance of scheduling out your content so you don't have to think about it as much, but it is important to still check in even after you've scheduled it. So, um, you know, you might do a Sunday night, schedule up for the rest of the week. That doesn't mean that you don't have to touch your Facebook at all for the rest of the week. It is definitely still worth going in each day to have a look, see if there are any comments that you can reply to and that sort of thing. Um, so measuring performance, um, this is key uh, really for understanding how many followers you have and therefore obviously the size of your community, how much it's growing, how quickly it's growing. Um, understanding how many people are seeing your posts. So on Facebook there, that's often called impressions or reach. Um, understanding whether people are engaging with your posts. So um, engagements on Facebook kind of include likes, reactions, comments, and shares. And you can see how many people are doing all of those things. Um, and you can understand how many people are clicking on your links to your website as well. Um, so you can um, measure your performance in a number of ways. Uh, there are the native analytics tools, which I'm gonna very, very quickly take you over in just a sec. Um, there are also freemium um, tools like Hootsuite, um, which I think with Hootsuite you can sort of plug in one social channel and it lets you see certain analytics uh, that you can uh, monitor with there. Hootsuite is also really good for scheduling if you wanted to do that. Um, and FLP Social as well also allows you to um, 
schedule and to monitor your performance as well. So all of those things, really, really important. It can also help to inform your content plan, which I obviously talked about in the previous slide, um, because if you can see what's performing well, then you can just keep posting more of the same kinds of content um, and you can experiment and see what performs well, what doesn't perform so well and that sort of thing. So uh, measuring performance on a Facebook page. Um, this is, let's play video. So what you'll find is this little insights bit at the left hand side of your page. Um, what you'll see here is a bunch of numbers um, and charts. Um, you can change it from uh, seven days to view the last 28 days. I would recommend the last 28 days because then you can see bigger trends. Um, and you can just see how, you know, things like your page views have done, um, you know, what kind of post reach you're getting, how many page likes you're getting and that sort of thing. You can see that all on there. And then the other thing I like to do is on the left hand side here, there's something called posts uh, and this can be really beneficial. Um, so what you'll be able to see here um, is the kind of times that your audience is actually online. Um, so what this is doing is it's literally saying um, uh, your audience is most active during these times. And then there's a huge dip here. You might wonder why that is. That's because everyone's asleep uh, during that time. Um, so that's really useful to see because you can sort of see what the peak uh, time is when people are out. And then you can schedule posts specifically for that time. Um, it is worth noting that Facebook gives you this information in Pacific time zone. So you'll need to convert it into GMT uh, or whichever country you um, are from. Um, so that's really useful to know. And then um, if you scroll down on the same page, you can actually see as well the posts that you've done um, recently. Um, and it will kind of tell you as well what kind of reach you're getting and what kind of engagement get you're getting on each post. So again, you can actually see the posts that have done the best and you can try and replicate those kinds of posts on your page. Um, so then we've also got uh, Facebook groups, very, very similar. Um, so along the left hand side of your Facebook group, what you can see is inside section and you've got a growth tracker. So that will show you how many members you've got, how quickly um, you've kind of built up those members and how quickly they've gone up over time. Um, you can see when people are active on your page as well, when your members have been sort of commenting on um, your stuff. And then you can also see at the bottom there, um, you can monitor your member requests, whether you've approved them, denied them, blocked them, etc. It's good to keep track of. Um, so you can see here how many posts are under engagement, you can see how many posts you've actually done um, and what kind of engagement uh, all of those posts received. Um, again, you can see where your most popular days are um, and you can also see when your most popular times are as well. Um, so that again will just help you to schedule content on your um, groups. Um, and then at the bottom here, you can also see um, what your posts were. These are your top posts and it will tell you like how many comments and how many people it's been seen by. So all of that is obviously really beneficial information. So uh, in summary, um, uh, social media might not always drive sales directly, uh, but it starts a conversation with your customers, which obviously uh, ensures that your brand is seen and heard um, and can contribute to sales later on down the line. Again, there's that sales funnel uh, and it's all about having a community of people and showcasing your knowledgeable um, in those areas. Um, you have to be where your customers are, um, otherwise how else will you understand what it is that they want? Um, so again, really great to have that two-way conversation on social media so you can literally see what they want, see what they're engaging with, um, and that will help them, that will help you to better understand them. Um, and Facebook gives you uh, the flexibility, obviously, to reach a lot of people in a lot of different ways. So uh, you can have as many pages and groups as you want, targeting, you know, lots of different um, groups of people. So um, that is one of the key reasons to use Facebook, I think. Um, so just a few quick uh, resources. Obviously, we have a few guides to digital marketing on um, Forever Knowledge. We have a social media code of conduct and we have a social media best practice guide. Um, and all of those are available here. So it's flpuk.info forward slash digital guides. 
Um, monthly campaigns, that's what I talked about earlier. We do a monthly campaign on our own social channel um, and we um, kind of explain the competitions that we're going to be doing and we explain uh, the assets that you can use. Um, so you can find those on uh, the From Knowledge Business site um, and then there's a, a tab called products and then a tab called campaigns and you can see all of the most recent campaigns on there. And then we actually also, uh, right towards the start of lockdown, so you may have already heard it, but you might not have, uh, we've done a podcast uh, on using social media to build your business. Uh, and we did that with Chris Leather and Claire Shanks, who are FBOs who are doing really, really well with social media with their businesses. Um, so you can listen to that by um, clicking, uh, by going to flpuk.info forward slash build business social media. Make sure that you put the capital letters uh, in the right spaces um, for that link to work. Um, or if you prefer listening to podcasts on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can just search Forever Podcast and it is called Using Social Media to Build Your Business. So you should be able to find it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. Um, and then another great resource is just to follow us on our main social media channels. Um, so you, like I said before, you can use any of the assets that we put up on our social media channels. Um, so our Facebook page is Forever Living Products UK and Ireland. Um, but it may also be worth you following um, Official Forever on Twitter or Forever UK on Instagram. Uh, as I mentioned, you can use any of the assets that we post on any of the channels. Um, so yeah it's definitely worth following there um you can also take inspiration from uh, you know you can see how things are performed on our channel and see if anything comes up which might be useful or relevant for your audience and you can absolutely share any of that content or take inspiration from it um so definitely worth following there um i hope this session has been beneficial that's pretty much it from me um if i've touched on anything today uh, that you'd kind of like expanding on in the future um, obviously let the events team know and we can see uh, if we can uh, work out any more sessions on more specific topics um, but I hope it's been really informative thank you for tuning in um, and I hope you have a great rest of the day thank you bye